So to do the Relish Today block, I'm going to go back into doing Brilliance. I need a new screen. I'm using my, my uh, 9 by 14 hoop, so it will accommodate the background quilting. And it said it was lines 1, embroidery files, and 6 by 6 is what I need, which is right. There's vertical, there's horizontal, and I think it wanted horizontal. Bring that in, and then I'm going to get my design, which is right here, and bring it in. That's great. That's all I really need to do to this. It's pretty straight up embroidery. So I just need to make sure that the background quilting is first, and the embroidery and applique is second, and that's it. So that'll be pretty quick. We don't need to do any color sorting or anything like this. This one's pretty straightforward. So I am going to send it over to my Luminaire wirelessly. I'm going to click on Utility, send to Solaris XP1, and I'm just going to call it Relish. And OK. All done. That's ready to go. And otherwise, you will file save stitch file as and save it to your usb you'll have to find that right here i don't have a usb installed right now so i don't have it on this computer all right let's go so all right i gotta turn on my little cricut mini iron and i've got my ironing pad here so i can iron at the machine i got this uh, from embroidery garden this is a cute little iron at pad I use it all the time when I'm doing applique at the machine. It has Insel Bright inside of it. I just use an old scrap of some hot peppers. Don't you think that's appropriate? <laughs> all right, I am going to load my hoop into the machine. I need baby blue thread. I found a spool of Floriani, I think that'll work. I think that'll work just fine. Y'all, I'm not a thread snob. I just, I've got Floriani, I have Madeira, Poly Neon, I have lots of Isocord. I use whatever I have on hand. I'm not real picky so long as it's in good condition and it does a nice stitch. And Floriani is a beautiful thread. I like Sulky. I have them all. Okay. There's even some Robinson Anton around here somewhere. I'm sure of it. People just give me threads. <laughs> okay. There's my batting. We are, let me go to embroidery, memory, wireless. I'm looking for my relish bottles. There it is. I'll wait for it to load. Right there. Hit set. It's happy. I'm going to hit embroidery and ready to go. Let's hit the green button. This is 20 minutes worth of stitching. This is so much fun. Oh my gosh, I'm having a good time. So that's my batting placement line. And you can tell, see now, the instruction books don't have anything that tell you what to do for the background quilting. You need to read the instructions for those separate from the book. Okay. And now here's the tack down for the background quilting for the batting. Make something today. <laughs> My girl Mary gave me this at the Houston Quilt Festival. Uh, she picked it up at Missouri Star for me. Now we need to trim away the batting. I'm trying to get my husband to take me to Missouri Star. They just reopened limited basis, I know, 
but to at least take me to Missouri Star on our way home from uh, Idaho. almost said Iowa. But, um, yeah, I'll have to work on him about that. <laughs> kind of out of the way. if Unless we go to Kansas. He's from Kansas, so. All right. That's done. So next is the placement line for the fabric. It'll do a little diagonal jump. Just like that. Now, I've got notches on here from me showing you guys how to do this if you're not doing the background quilting, so you can center it. As long as uh, you have adequate coverage all the way around, you should be fine. You know what? I think this is upside down. Does it matter? It looks like it's more straight, like this, more legible. I don't know. It's all over the place, those letters. And here's the tuck down stitch. And now it's back All right, next is the placement stitch for the mustard bottle. I'm gonna switch out my thread. Put my little pad under here. I'm not even gonna tell you, because I can't, how many times I have sewn a heating pad, the hot pad, to the back of my project. <laughs> I'm famous for that. This is kind of a bright, shiny yellow. Well, I think it'll be okay. Is that going to look all right, or is that too lemony? Uh, I don't know if I like that color. You know, I've got a darker yellow. That's too lemony for my taste. Let me go with a darker yellow. More mustard than lemon. Well, it's okay to change midway through, no big deal. All right, I think that's better. Now, let me place my little mustard bottle. Oh yeah, I'm liking that new color much better. Now, if you iron these down, technically you can skip the tack down stitch, pull the pad out of the way. <laughs> It is so easy to do that. Matter of fact, if you haven't done it, you're not really an embroiderer. <laughs> oh, that looks great. I like that color much better than the lemon. I should have color sorted this so it would have done the yellow all at once, the green all at once, and the red all at once. So I'm gonna jump ahead. Let me show you what I'm gonna do. I'm going to jump ahead to stitch the top of the mustard, to do all the mustard stitches. So I'm going to hit the needle plus minus, and I'm going to look on this little part right here. I'm going to do that, 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 ketchup bottle top, ketchup stitch. Look at this. There it is. Now I'm going to go backwards to do, you don't have to do that if you color sort. See what I'm saying? I guess they put a color change in there in case you wanted to have your uh, top of your mustard bottle be different from the outside. I'm not going to do that. I don't care. I finished stitching the mustard bottle and now I'm going to go backwards. I'm going to touch thread backwards because right now it wants to stitch relish today. And Right 
right there. And now I'm going to change my thread color. Totally should have color sorted this. This is the placement stitch for the relish. And tack down for the relish. And again, I'm going to advance my threads until I get right here. All right, I'm going to switch out to a red because I need to do the ketchup bottle. But I gotta go backwards to do the placement line. See, if you look on the screen, it wants to do the mustard top, but I'm going out of order because I don't understand. There we go. The ketchup bottle's all in the right order. All right, I made it through the whole project without sewing my ironing pad to my project. <laughs> okay, I jumped ahead in the stitch order to the relish today, which is going to be in black. For me, that's the color I chose. All right, all finished. Let me pop this out of here, get up close and show you guys. There are some jump stitches. Let me show you up close. See these little uh, tiny stitches that go between the letters? Those are called jump stitches and you want to trim those off. When I trim a jump stitch, kind of think about how the thread went. Um, this one went from left over to right. And you want to trim this side of it first and then it kind of pops up and it's easier to get off than if you do it the other way. And see, you really need a pair of tweezers to hold on to it and pull it straight up. These little snips are great because you've got to get in there and you all really need to go through and trim your jump stitches because it makes a world of difference how, they, how your project looks when you're done. And a poorly digitized design, it can take as long to do this as it does stitch out the whole thing. So it's really important that you Use a design that's been digitized well. Okay, now I'm going to trim it up to the size I need, the six and a half inch size using the orange pop rulers. 